Welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation, move away from World Water Day, and now we're talking refineries. A couple of days ago, the Nigerian government made announcements, of course, of uh, decisions to rehabilitate the Port Harcourt refinery uh, at the cost of $1.5 billion. This has, in the last few days, uh, brought reactions from across the country, uh, from major political uh, leaders, um, across the country and of course civil society groups uh, of course complaining about why the government will spend that much money to rehabilitate a refinery and um, you know Atiku Abubakar, Peter Obi, Ted Peter side are some of the biggest names who have shared their thoughts you know calling this uh, you know waste of money. This morning we're joined by Mr. Martin Onovo, a petroleum engineer to share his thoughts on this uh, discussion, of course, is this a great idea by the Nigerian government or does he agree that maybe it's wastage, according to other people who have made their, uh, their views on this? Good morning, Mr. Onovo. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. All right. Thank I'm, you. I'm going to, you know, let you get your views on this first before we go into other questions. Uh, there's people who have described this as wasteful and very unnecessary uh, move by the Nigerian government. They've uh, given different reasons, of course, mentioned the Martinez refinery that uh, Shell sold for $1.2 billion and then asked why we will be spending this much uh, to rehabilitate a refinery that has produced almost nothing in the last couple of decades. Um, do you agree with this, uh, this perspective? Well, um, we need to be specific. Uh, let me put some background to this. The refineries here in Nigeria are very valuable national assets. We need to get that very clear. That's number one. Number two, these refineries are very critical to national economic development. That's number two. Should we fix the refineries? Most definitely, yes. Will it cost $1.5 billion? I do not think so. Can this government fix the refineries? Very, very unlikely, and I'll give you some background. Late in 2015, this same government promised, or even if you want me to go further back, before the elections, this same government promised it will build new modern refineries. It's six years down the road, none has been built. Late in 2015, it promised that the refineries will be back on production within 90 days. That did not happen. In 2016, it informed us that it was in discussions with the original equipment manufacturers to fix the refineries. Thereafter, it informed us that it could not afford the price then, which was 200 and uh, I think $97 million. Thereafter, the same government informed us that it was going to engage local service companies to fix the refineries. That apparently did not happen. Thereafter, the government claimed it needed $550 million to fix all the refineries, all. That did not happen. Thereafter, the government said it needed $1.2 billion to fix all the refineries. That did not happen. Now, the government says it needs $1.5 billion to fix only Port Harcourt. Now, you can see why so many people are suspicious that this is another channel for slush funds. In addition, Ghana has been conducting turnaround maintenances on its refinery, the Tema oil refinery. The last phase concluded cost only $36 million. So what is the cost 
of the entire Portacourt refinery brand new. This $1.5 billion seems outrageous, but to be professional, we need to see the scope. Okay. Mr. Onovo, the federal government has said that this time it will be different and that they've contracted an Italian company to make this happen and that the refinery rehabilitation will take place in three phases. They said 18 months, 24 months, and 44 months. And that after that, they're moving uh, to repair the refineries in uh, other states. And that's by May 2023. You're saying you're not, you know, so optimistic this time that the government will fulfill well, its promise. Well, given the historical record of this particular government and the level of corruption uh, nepotism, incompetence in this government, take it from me, this government is incapable, I said incapable, to do what it has said. And I've just given you a chronology of previous uh, promises. So if the government has made five false promises on this same refinery rehabilitation, or building new modern refineries, and you choose to believe them. I choose not to believe them. Well, then, 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 people and that not... is the skepticism that you're hearing from P2B and everybody else. All right, we, we understand, you know, that uh, point. But there's people who would argue that uh, the government has not, you know, entirely failed with regards uh, fixing infrastructure. And if they they were, you know, successful with regards the rail lines, the Abuja Kaduna, now we're talking Port Harcourt, Meiduguri, uh, Lagos, Ibado, and the likes, then, you know, we should trust the government to, of course, do the same thing with the refineries. Uh, do you, you well, know, share similar your, your, premise, your premise is very wrong, very, very wrong, because the government itself admitted that Abuja Kaduna was over 90% complete by the previous government. The government itself admitted that. So that's in the public domain. I don't know why you choose to give them credit for that. No, it's not, it's not, it's not my view now. I'm, I'm sharing, you know, some of the statements that I've seen. People say, well, you know, if they were able, you know, to you know, fix the rail lines, they've got some, some of the trains uh, running, then we should trust them with the refineries. And I'm just sharing that with you. Um, I also well, want there, to... There, there are two dimensions to it. Yes. There's the dimension of the complete lack of credibility. There's the dimension of corruption. Now, there's also the dimension of capacity. Capacity. And if you want to have a comprehensive uh, perspective, you need to consider all these dimensions. Otherwise, even the reverse uh, state governor has publicly expressed his uh, skepticism. Okay. And this is founded. This is founded on a very elaborate and ignominious uh, chronology of false promises on the same subject and on other subjects. So the government has a total lack of credibility. All right. I, I want to bring up, you know, the statements from Matedo Peter's side. Um, he, it said, in quote, the federal government should halt the $1.5 billion approval uh, for repair of Port Harcourt's uh, refinery and subject this brazen and expensive adventure to an informed national debate. Many experts prefer that this refinery is sold, as is, by the Bureau of Public Enterprise to core investors with proven capacity to repair it with their own funds. Uh, do you think that might be a better move by the government? No, categorically no. When we started this discussion, I clearly pointed out that the refineries are very valuable national assets. I do not think anybody will contest that. I also insist that the refineries are very critical to national economic development. The issue here is the issue of corruption, which so many people don't want to mention. So they hide behind all these technical issues. Uh, it's an issue of corruption, nepotism, associated incompetence, and a complete lack of credibility. Otherwise, the right thing to do is to fix the refineries. That is the right thing to do. But will the government fix it? No. 
Has the government fixed security? No. Has the government uh, fixed corruption? No, it has increased corruption. Has the government fixed the economy? No, it has ruined it. So if you wish to trust the government with this $1.5 billion, we will not join you to trust the government on this. And what I take from what uh, Mr. Peter Said has said is this needs to be transparent and subjected to scrutiny. And coming back to you, the constitution of the country is very clear that the mass media, mass media, must hold the government accountable. So it's also your responsibility as Plus TV to follow up, get all the details, monitor both spending and milestones if the government goes ahead. But continuing to leave the refineries in this situation of lack of uh, production is wasteful. It's a destruction of our national assets. All right. Mr. The 1.5 billion is questionable, given the example I've given you uh, about the thermal oil refinery in uh, Ghana. I do not think that the total time there costs up to $100 million. And I've also given you the historical information of this same government on these same refineries. So this $1.5 billion looks outrageously wasteful and corrupt. But that does not mean we should not fix our refineries. We are insisting, and the majority of Nigerians. So it's not only the movement for fundamental change. All right, Mr. Uh, Olovo. Um, it's, lab, labor also has this position, and that is the correct patriotic position. Okay. The minister has admitted that one of the biggest problems they've been facing is operations and maintenance of these refineries. He said this just last week. How can we check this problem? Because when we talk about maintenance, there's also the big issue about you know, pipeline vandalism. You know, so how can we check this? The minister has self-indicted. He has been a minister for so long. What is his responsibility? It is his responsibility to check that. What is he managing? Simple um, management uh, Systems require that you have preventive components of your systems, you have verification components of your systems, mm -hmm. and you have corrective components of your systems. So if he has this situation and he has not been able to fix it, he has self-indicted himself for incompetence. And you remember that I started this discussion emphasizing corruption, nepotism, and incompetence, which are the real problems. These are the real problems. Okay. But people are hiding behind their technicalities and technical uh, considerations. Right. There is no challenge in fixing refineries. The one in Niger gets fixed. The one in Ghana gets fixed. All right. But once okay. you bring in corruption, then you have all this confusion that follows. OK, Mr. Onovo, I, I wanted to ask you about Ali Kodangote. He's building Nigeria, so Africa's biggest refinery. It's, for the past four years, it's near, near completion now. What can the Nigerian government learn from Aliko Dangote and is privatization the way to go? Well, uh, privatization is an option. Is it our preferred option? No. Because we are avoiding issues and the media is helping us to avoid issues. The issue here is corruption. That is the fundamental issue because even the incompetence and the nepotism are products of corruption. If you don't have corruption, you wouldn't have nepotism. You wouldn't have the incompetence we have seen. Now, Ali Kodangote is building a 650,000 barrels refinery, fertilizer plant, and petrochemicals plant for $15 billion. If you remove the cost components for the fertilizer plant and the petrochemicals plant, then it's costing him about $9 billion to build 650,000 barrels. If you use that as your cost guidance, then you find out that it costs you less than $1.5 billion to build 100,000 barrels. That is simple arithmetic. Primary school children can do that. Now, you are going to use $1.5 billion 
to do a repair that you have failed to do several times. Who wants to believe that? If you choose to believe that, we are not going to believe that. And we are saying that this government needs to be thoroughly checked, thoroughly, by the media that has the re constitutional responsibility to hold the government accountable. And also by the legislature. This needs to be thoroughly checked. The amount sounds outrageous. As you can see with the comparison of the Dangote cost, the amount sounds outrageous. And this government has failed on everything else. Why do you think it would succeed on this one? All right. It has so, failed so, on every time. Mr. Silva is saying that Nigerians should hold him accountable for every dollar and every spent, uh, every dollar and every cent spent on this Potaka refineries, insisting strongly that the president wants to leave a legacy of, you know, refineries that he built and rehabilitated, you know, so just to put... Like I said, Mr. Silva has first self-indicted himself for incompetence. I've said that earlier. Uh, what is his credibility for us to believe him when he has self-indicted himself for incompetence? The president he's talking about has been in office for six years. The president effectively has less than two years to spend in office because typically the election year is dominated by politics. So effectively he has less than two years. What he has not been able to do in six years, Mr. Silva wants us to believe he can do in one and a half. If you choose to believe him, we choose not to believe him. All right. That's and all. like I said, the way forward now is for the media. This amount is near 700 billion. Asu was at home because of 65 billion for very many months, nearly a year. And this is 700 billion. Please, right. media needs to sit up, follow up, and hold the government as accountable, not as demanded by myself. But that's required by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Okay. I, I also want you to share your views on, you know, the modular, modular refineries that the government has repeatedly spoken about. Um, you know, there's uh, some of them that I believe have already uh, started, but they've continued to speak on investment in modular refineries and open up that space so that we can channel our uh, resources there. Uh, do you also believe that that might be a better option? Um, instead of spending $1.5 billion on, you know, just the Port Harcourt refinery? Well, don't forget what I say. Our position is that the refineries need to be fixed. That is our position. That's not changing. What we're saying is that this government is too corrupt, too incompetent to fix anything and has not been able to fix anything in six years. We're also saying that the $1.5 billion appears outrageous. Therefore, the government needs to be very clearly transparent for us to see the scope, verify the scope, verify the costs, verify the contractor selection process, and then monitor progress. This needs to be done. Well, we... we... We completely, you know, get your views. Uh, we're just asking for, um, you know, now you've said, you know, it, it, it ha the government has less than two years to remain in office. Um, is, is there any things that you think are still possible with regards uh, Nigeria being able to refine its own uh, petroleum? Um, and unfortunately, in the, in the midst of all this conversation, th th we've, thank we've you, lost... Sir. We've lost, you know, other, you know, details that a refinery should be able to produce. We've continued to flare gas and waste those resources for many, many years. And we don't even talk about these things. So what would your suggestions be if you were in government? The, the refineries need to be fixed. We have said that. But no system. This government is too corrupt, too incompetent to be trusted on any item, any, even on $100 million. And the indications are clear. This $1.5 billion is maybe the 10th story the government is telling on refineries. So why on earth will any objective person trust the government? No system, no matter how brilliant, can work without integrity. Integrity is the foundation. Integrity is what the government lacks. 
And it is the lack of integrity that you see as corruption, you see as nepotism, you see as incompetence, you see as the inefficiency in running the refineries. Should we fix our refineries? Definitely yes. Can this government fix it? Too corrupt, too incompetent. What are the options going forward? Let us demand transparency, full transparency in all dimensions, scope of the project, detailed cost breakdown, contractor selection, project progress and monitoring, progress measurement. It needs to be fully transparent at every stage. This Italian company, we need to know its track record. We need to know its expertise. We need to question its prices. That's what we need to do. And that's the way forward now. And this okay. insistence on privatization, the history of privatization in this country since 1999 has a 95% failure. Okay. Why will anybody still mention or insist on privatization? Let us check corruption and then we do the right things and get them done. Martin Nonovo. We Thank are you. still having the issue with the discourse now. Thank you very much for joining us this morning and for your views on this very, very important topic. Uh, we look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you very much. Thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All, All right. right. Have a great day. Uh, you know, that, that was, um, of course, our first conversation with regards uh, fixing and the possibilities of investing $1.5 billion dollars in rehabilitating the Port Harcourt refinery. We, the conversation continues. We're having somebody join us next. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, 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 a presidential um, uh, spokesperson, mm -hmm. he would be speaking with us this morning also on uh, the possibility of refining or rather rehabilitating the Port Harcourt refinery. And that comes up next.